Thank you for tuning in and welcome back to the Sandwich of Coherency. So let's just go ahead and jump right into this. So a lot of news has been coming out. Um, well, we've already known that the Bidens have been corrupt, but more and more information keeps coming out. Now apparently we have audio of him being bribed and the FBI <laughs> redacting that from the uh, 1023, apparently. And I think it's just so surprising that there's not more um, anger and loud, just, you know, booming to the skies about how terrible this is for America from Republicans. Now, don't get me wrong, they are making some noise, but and like I said before, this is really one of those things you have to give to the left. Um, they don't really think it through, but they're very loud with the things that they have to say. And the difference is the Republicans on this time, we have the information, you know, so they should be a lot louder. I mean, think about it. If you think about what went on with the Trump impeachment scandals and all that, and the whole Russia collusion, and we now know all of that was fake. I mean, we knew from the beginning, but I mean, just more and more evidence to the, just saying that it is absolutely fake and there was a cover up through the whole thing. And you really have this to be able you're really able to pin this on Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden. Um, throw a bomb into the mix if you want there. But now they actually have actual evidence of this stuff. You know, the Republicans have what the Democrats wish they had when they were trying to impeach Trump. But they're just not loud as they should be. I give them credit for attempting to bring this to the public, but this should be really... One of those things that more people need to be, it, it just should be hammered everywhere. Because again, we have another election cycle coming up. And, you know, I, I, I want to be honest, you know, if you think about what we're finding out, the depth, about the depth of the corruption that the Biden family has been up to. Um, if you think about the pay for play schemes they've been involved in, we have tons of proof. It's, that's not speculation. We have evidence. Now, if you think about that, and you look back on the past election, it, it's easy to see how one could say that I, I truly think that something was wrong with the last presidential election. And if you think about everything they're trying to do right now to keep their opponent from being able to run against him, you have to ask yourself, do you really... Would you really put the idea of them doing something to corrupt this upcoming election out of the ballpark for them? Would you, could you really see that as something they wouldn't do? Because I don't see it as being far-fetched. I, at this rate, the way they're going, this is something I totally believe that they would do. And there really will need to be more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Hmm. There just have to be more focus on the next one into the details to make sure that what happened last time doesn't happen again. And the fact that I don't trust this current administration to hold an open and fair and honest election. But as we're talking about the whole scandal with Biden, let's go ahead and jump into this clip from Josh Hawley, which is why you're here today. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Abadi, let me just stay with you. You just started to answer Senator Blackburn's question that not releasing the 1023 or talking about it as a matter of life and death, question of life and death, you said. Explain. It is potentially a question of life and death for whom? with regard to the source of the information. So, okay, so now we've confirmed that the document exists. That's progress because the FBI director initially denied that it exists. Why did he do that? We, we have already and previously acknowledged the existence of the documents. Yeah, yeah, after you first denied it. Now, when a member of this committee read it, Right, the FBI director, let's just get the record straight. The FBI director initially said, it doesn't exist. Then Senator Grassley said, I've read it. Then he said, oh, okay, well, gotcha. I guess it does exist. Let me pause right there. You know, as this continues to go on, and as more and more information keeps coming out, we, what we already knew becomes even more solidified, but it's worse than we actually believed. The FBI
FBI is beyond corrupt. The current administration is weaponizing them against their opponents, um, not just those that are in the political realm against them in office, but those that are against them voting. And this weaponization of these, these, you know, these offices, these groups against American citizens is not going to end well for anybody. And this is why I'm saying you can't believe that the next election is going to be fair play. When you have your, your departments, such as the FBI, the DOJ, actively working to cover up the scandals of the current president. If the shoe was on the other foot and this was stuff about Trump, there would be no hesitation. You would not, you couldn't go a day without hearing about it. But let's continue. Now you're going back and forth with members of this committee, what's in it. Why don't you just release it? Is it classified? The document is not classified. Okay. Will you commit to releasing it? Senator, we'll take that back and we will work with you in this committee. Uh, How about just a yes or no? Will you commit to releasing this unclassified document that alleges that the President of the United States, the President of the United States, has taken $5 million or more in bribes from a foreign nation? The document has already been released pursuant to a subpoena to the House Oversight Committee. Has it and been released we, to this committee? We will work with this committee within the parameters that are established to meet Will you the release the document to the public? It's unclassified. Don't you think the American people have a right to see it? Uh, Senator, the document, as you know, contains sensitive information that has bearing on the life of the source of the information, potentially. You can redact the source's name. We do this all the time. <sighs> to worry about the life of the informant. Not worried about the life of the, it's not, they're not worried about it coming from the people on the right. You gotta, who are they worried <clears throat> about <laughs> the cycle of violence coming from? Somebody attempting to protect Joe Biden? Well, I mean, hmm, hmm, I, I don't know. In some instances, Senator, and I know you know this, that is not sufficient to protect people. And that's what we strive and work to do each and every day. And I hope you would take that seriously, too. Oh, I take it very seriously. But I also take seriously the fact that your institution has repeatedly abused its authority, has repeatedly targeted political opponents. Your institution is the one that went to the door of pro-life protesters with SWAT teams to try and intimidate people because of their speech. Your institution is the one that treated parents as domestic terrorists because of their speech. Your institution is the one that, according to the court, the FISA court, ran 278,000 unwarranted, probably illegal queries on Americans, right? That was your institution, correct? There, the, with respect to the compliance incidents, yes, some of the other things you cited, we can take them one by one. They are not. Compliance, you, you would characterize the unlawful querying 278,000 times of American citizens as compliance issues? We've said before, I've said that the totally unacceptable. Who's been uh, fired for it? Individuals involved uh, are handled through the disciplinary process. Who's been fired for it? We have, there will, in, the, in the case of the uh, unintentional instance where something similar happened, we have fired people in the past. Wait, I, I'm sorry, what, what, what does that word salad mean? The unintentional instance where some, what, what does that mean? Who's been fired for the 278,000 times that you improperly or illegally queried the database for American citizens? When we Anybody? When we find intentional incidents, were you saying that the 278,000 queries were unintentional? I believe that's correct. Wow, 278,000 times American citizens' information was queried by your agency unintentionally? That's your testimony? I would want to go back and check that, Senator. Uh, but well, yes, that's what you just told me. My understanding is that the vast majority of Well, wait, that's different. You just said it was. You just said it was unintentional. Now it's the vast majority. Which is it? Do you know? I would want to go back and check it. So you don't but know. My understanding is that 
likely all are were unintentional likely in, all so first it was all of them then it was vast majority now it's likely all. so you don't know is the answer to the question i don't know the answer as we sit here today but i will Could find have started out with that probably who was fired for the lies to the fisa court for the carter page warrant who, who who was fired for that anybody has anybody been held accountable for your institution deliberately lying to a FISA court to get a wiretap on an ongoing presidential campaign? There is an ongoing disciplinary process with respect to individuals involved in that. Here's the deal. You're back in front of us asking for the reauthorization of extraordinary authorities. Multiple courts have uncovered extraordinary abuses perpetrated by your agency. You are at the same time concealing information about serious allegations made against the President of the United States, even as your institution also targets his chief political opponent in an unprecedented way. Why would we ever give you the blank check that you want to continue surveilling American citizens in an improper manner? Why would we ever do that? Nobody's been fired. And that's the reality. Nobody has been fired. And you take, give an example, you take someone like Debbie Washington Schultz, who's still, um, working in politics, <laughs> flapping a trap, you know, and this lady was found guilty of rigging the DNC against Bernie Sanders so that Hillary Clinton could get the nomination. Nobody got fired. Nobody got in trouble. And these institutions have been allowed to act with absolute impunity for so long. Why wouldn't they think that they could get away with it? Why wouldn't they think that they could go before committees and members of Congress and just say, I'm not telling you shit. We don't have to do what you say. We do what we want. Yeah, we're supposed to answer you, but we do what we want because nobody gets in any fucking trouble. Nobody gets fired. We, we have investigations, departmental, blah, 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 blah. It takes a while. How many years does it take? How many? Typically, they just move them to another office. Nobody gets fired. So, you know, these are things I want people to remember coming up on this next election, Re to know how corrupt this president is. Do not let the Democrats hoodwink you again with that bullshit. I'm here to make sure that we all get to hear what's really going on and at least have a chance to, you know, think about it for ourselves. So, but again, like I say all the time, we'll see what happens and we'll keep our fingers crossed. But I thank you for tuning in and we'll catch you next time.